So this chapter opens up with Bakugo finally coming back to life, but also witnessing the near death of All Might, because we see All For One is about to straight up rip him in half. And this is coinciding with Night Eye's grim future of All Might. You know, something we've been talking about for like five years now, where he said, you will encounter another villain, and what awaits you then is an unspeakably gruesome death, like he told this to All Might. I guess it's like seven years ago in story at this point it's like six or seven years ago when he fought all for one and like turned him into a potato you know the greatest fight in history that horikoshi will never show us unfortunately but it's like this was what all of that was leading to the moment where all for one has all might held up and about to rip him in half and this is in theory like what night i saw at that moment now i'm not gonna try to talk about if horikoshi always had this planned out exactly Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I do like that Night Eye says you will encounter another villain because in that instance, it's implying he's obviously not talking about all for one since he had just fought him. So I just thought, oh, it's going to be Shigaraki, but no, it's just a young version of all for one. So I guess you could just say that Night Eye saw this, but he saw a young all for one and just assumed it was like another villain. Then after this, we start going into the whole the wind blows narration in this chapter, which is... I guess the theme of the chapter, and it's going to be going into all of this wishful thinking energy prayer stuff, and I'll go more into that. But we got to talk about Bakugo first because, like we said, he's finally come back to life, and he is not wasting any time. He is just darting straight at Izuku because they just are able to communicate with eye contact at this point. Bakugo is like, hey, I got to be the one to go save All Might because Izuku is holding Shigaraki at bay. He's been holding him for like a year now. <laughs> and Izuku's like, bet, come over here. I can propel you at light speed now. Because as Bakugo is coming towards him, Izuku holds out his left hand while still holding Shigaraki with the black whips in the right hand, grabs Bakugo as he's coming at him, then does like a 360 spin you know, maintaining the momentum. And as they're spinning, Izuku activates gear shift on him. This is incredible. Gear shift is the quirk of the second user of One For All. And it essentially allows you to amplify the speed of things that you touch, typically small things. But given that gear shift has been amplified by the overall power of One For All, it has a much more refined and crazy ability because Izuku can use this to accelerate the speed of his cells. So he, as a person, just goes Super Saiyan, starts just ignoring inertia, gravity, things like that. And he's doing that to Bakugo here. So Bakugo, already going incredibly fast, using his new awakened cluster explosion quirk, where he can expel the nitroglycerin from his sweat out of all the pores in his body, replicating somewhat of a full cowling effect like Izuku has with One For All. Then on top of that, getting gear shifted and... 360 swung by Izuku. This is an amazing sequence. I love it so much. It's like when Horikoshi really wants to go in with his characters, he goes in. I know we've been hot and cold with this series for the last year and a half, but when he wants to cook, he's going to cook. Horikoshi, that is. In my spoiler video earlier this week, I called him Gege by mistake. That's what I get for recording Jujutsu Kaisen and My Hero spoilers back to back at 2 a.m. But that wasn't me saying one is better than the other guys. I like them both in their own ways. But as Bakugo is getting propelled to save All Might, Shigaraki is like, <laughs> you know, he's not going to make it in time, right? And somehow Shigaraki, like, knows how the vestiges and One for All works. I mean, technically he was in that world for a second, but not enough to have like a full understanding of how it works even better than the freaking audience and he's like the all might inside of you used to be just a formless silhouette they don't appear like their true form while they're still alive but now he started looking like his real self didn't he because we saw that energy ghost of all might you know taking his place inside of the quirk factor of one for all with the rest of the vestiges that's because uh, i guess it's implied that a part of all might is within the quirk factor of one for all right i guess it was explained that way all of the users have a part of their quote unquote i guess soul in it or whatever that's not straight up said but i guess it's implied we actually see that energy ghost of all might start to dissipate next to the second user as he was warning izuku to not use gear shift because he's like you know the kickback from
from it will be stronger than ever because he's already used it before and the second user already told me he'll only have like 15 minutes left. It's taken such an extreme toll on your body that you just can't maintain this. So now on top of that, he's doing it to Bakugo. So we have like multiple ticking clocks going on here. I also really like what Shigaraki says here. He's like the death of the man who brought dreams to this world will bring reality back. Referring to All Might, of course. And I like the dichotomy that is represented through like the generation that All Might fostered because they were born into the world that he essentially created. And it's like we have Izuku, you know, the ultimate stan, worships All Might, wants to become the successor, as where Shigaraki completely hates him and thinks that he's essentially like a fascist dictator, which I guess if you were a villain, you would have a pretty good argument saying that All Might was, at least for, you know, anything that doesn't fit his justice. Because as Doflamingo said, Seeing you a but anyway, back to Bakugo coming to save All Might, because as he's approaching him at unfathomable speeds, we see everyone around the world like watching on and hoping that All Might isn't killed here, hoping that he's saved. And the narration takes over and it starts describing the onlookers and it says, Within thoughts, there is sort of an energy, I believe, that now energy from striving for a certain future energy from wishing. Can the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil really bring about a hurricane in Texas? So someone brought it to my attention that this concept in the series was brought up once other time in the series, I think. And it was like when Izuku had just become 100% with the assistance of Eri like perpetually regenerating him. I think it was only in like one panel of that one single page, but I'm not the biggest fan of this type of stuff in these series, but it seems to be I don't know, somewhat common in Japanese writing, or at least from what I've seen, like thought manifestation. I, maybe they're big on that. Maybe their writing and particular things that they create have to do with that concept. Uh, more often than not, I guess. And it seems like from both ends of the spectrum, like we have the evil thoughts and the negative thoughts with creating yokais and urban legends. Even in Jujutsu Kaisen, like cursed energy comes from negativity, negative energy. But then, you know, we have the other end of the spectrum and it kind of also parallels to like how Goku was able to feed Boo with the spirit bomb and all that stuff. It's also kind of implied that that's how devil fruits came to be in One Piece. So it's like, hey, it's all good. Go for it, Horikoshi if you want to have this as an element of your series, I get it. It also, you know, touches something in the reader too. But I just wish that the power creep didn't push the population to just essentially resorting to just praying and, and nothing else. And also as the whole thing about here with the flap of the butterfly's wings in Brazil can bring about a hurricane in Texas. Also shout out to Brazil and Texas. Love both those places. But this is like the, as far as I know, like the iconic phrasing from the butterfly effect theory, right? Or the butterfly effect concept, whatever you call it. Where like if a butterfly were to flap his wings in a specific way in Brazil, it would cause like a chain of events that would eventually lead to a hurricane happening in Texas. So I don't know, a butterfly flaps its wings one too many times and it like upsets a bee or something. And then the bee goes, flies off and like stings some guy in the neck in Brazil. And then him getting stuck in the neck, I don't know, drives his boat off the river or something. And that causes an accident. And then that accident causes like traffic and that traffic prevents people from getting to where they were supposed to be at that specific time. And, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on until there's like a hurricane in Texas because of it. And I guess you could say that this is all ultimately leading to Night Eye's vision being changed because obviously he was supposed to die but he is not now i mean even like the quirk factor of one for all thought he was gonna die it was like yeah let's just uh pre-upload the uh the full facsimile of all might in here you know because he's gonna die anyway let's just get prepared but no bakugo's like nah if izuku can break fate you know like he did against overhaul then bakugo can do it too because he does and he blasts through all for one so fast, like all for one doesn't even realize it until after the fact, takes his arms off in the process and saves All Might and ends the chapter with him saying, we'll win this. Really satisfying sequence here. In my spoilers video, I said this is almost like us getting our cake and eating it too. Not exactly. I do appreciate that All Might has survived. So I'll say it's kind of like us getting our cake and I don't know, smelling it or maybe tasting the icing. 
eating the cake too would be like All Might getting one for all back. But that's just a forgotten hope for me at this point. But I'll gladly take him living. I didn't want to have to experience his death and I really didn't want to have to talk to you guys about it. Nothing against Geo, I just didn't want to have to get emotional. But now that All for One has to regenerate from this, of course, I guess it's going to stress him a little bit more and maybe he will regress in age to the point of where he's like five or six years old eventually. Maybe not right now, but I think this is leading to Bakugo's final fight. I know I've talked about this before, but it just makes so much sense that it would be Bakugo and Izuku at the end facing off against Shigaraki and All for One. So this chapter starts off with Bakugo successfully saving All Might in more ways than one. And it kind of sends All Might into this ethereal dream type of hallucination where he's straight up talking to Night Eye. And Night Eye confirms that like, yeah, this was the horrible fate that he saw. Like the prophesized death that he's been talking about for years now. It was in fact all for one as a teenager ripping All Might in half. <laughs> like all those years ago, that's what Night Eye saw. But he also says fate has been twisted. But your dreams still did kind of end there, but it was also passed on to the others. Because, you know, in that sequence, All Might was essentially ready to give his life to stop All for One. He, like, he accepted death. But, you know, Bakugo and Izuku, they're just too powerful. And they both broke Night Eye's prophecies or visions of the future. Which, as far as I know, they're, like, the only two who have ever been able to do that. And I also like in the sequence how the dialogue kind of gets a little meta. Because All Might's like, you know, what about the sensei dying and passing it on? And Night Eye's like, you know, save it for the comic books, bro. This is battle manga. We don't gotta play by those tropes. And I'm sure it angers some people or think that it's safe writing to keep All Might alive and maybe, but I think at the same time, it's a fine swerve here considering how much it was built up and hammered home. Like I myself was ready for All Might to die. So it's cool that it was subverted and he lives. However, I do have a gripe with another character not dying and we're gonna talk about it soon. People around the world reacting to like All Might getting saved by Bakugo. And there is a bunch of familiar faces here, but then we see the two kids from the second My Hero movie. I think it was called Heroes Rising, the one with Nine in it. And it's like, I guess that movie's canon now. And and guys, I know, Horikoshi said that the movies are canon or whatever, but um, I don't know. If they're canon, why don't you just bring everything in, bro? Just bring it all in. All the ramifications, all the experience. Why don't you talk about Bakugo getting one for all for like a couple minutes? We don't talk about that. And also, I guess this means we're gonna see Roddy next. He was like the uh, tag along dude in the third movie. He was almost kind of like Izuku's love interest. Don't tell anybody I said that. But now that Bakugo has successfully saved All Might, All Might's like, are you all right, Bakugo? He's like, shut up, that's my line. You know, still having that old Bakugo zest in him still. But then he coughs up like a leader of blood. <laughs> and it turns out that Edge shot is like coming out of his chest and he's somehow still alive. And if you're surprised, that's fine because I am too. I was under the assumption that he was giving his life to save Bakugo here, right? Like we straight up said our goodbyes to Edshot as he says thousand sheet pierce zenith and used his body to repair Bakugo's wounded heart and lungs and all that stuff. That's not the case. He's surviving this. <laughs> He's surviving this somehow. And that's what I was saying. Like I could accept All Might Living. He's my favorite character. I have some partisan there. Edshot neutral on him. I'm assuming most of the audience is neutral on him. He hasn't really been built up enough for him to be like a fan favorite, to be honest. But if there was anybody that could have died in this sequence, it was Edshot, right? I mean, Midnight died. And it's like, whoa, well, it almost seems like it was a waste to kill her. Like she didn't even have to die. I don't know. I don't want it to sound like I'm like complaining. I'm just, I don't know, more so confused. But going further, it gets a little more, uh, Interesting, I guess you could say, because Edshot says that I simply just bound things together. I kept trying to make your heart and lungs work, but you wouldn't wake up. And my ultimate technique eats away at my own life, and I was at my limit. And it was either going to be me or you, but then through your bloodstream came a drop of nitroglycerin, which is his uh, little sweat spheres. And apparently it bound things together. I guess nitroglycerin can also be a healing agent, but it also like exploded too. And like, I don't know, kickstarted his heart possibly too from the, his quirk strengthening over the years, as he says. It doesn't really matter, guys. It doesn't matter. 
Bakugo's back. I already just accepted that Bakugo was coming back last year when all of this stuff started with Headshot becoming spaghetti and then going through Wash's bubble to sanitize his body. So it's fine. Bakugo's back. To be honest, Horikoshi, you didn't even have to tell us this much. But I know he did because he's trying to keep Bakugo strong. You know, because if like this was all just Ed Shot and Best Genius and the others who are entirely responsible for bringing back Bakugo, it's like, yeah, he, he was just saved. And he didn't do anything on his own volition. He didn't earn anything. Just everything was given to him. And Horikoshi's trying to stifle that narrative. And he's saying, no, Bakugo came back to life on his own. I mean, yeah, he needed some ninja spaghetti in him, but he still did it on his own, guys. Then All Might passes on his broken support item gauntlet to Bakugo, which of course was inspired by Bakugo, as, you know, along with the rest of his support items from the Class 1A. And he says that it's not working anymore, and that's because, you know, he was trying to blow it up to destroy All for One, but All for One, like, stabbed his rivet quirk through it. And I don't think that's the case. I'm sure it still works. It's possible that it even exploded in the end of this chapter, but I don't know, maybe. But I'm sure that this is going to come back and be more than, as All Might says, a splint. And then after he gives us the Bakugo, we get the ultimate fan service moment here. I'm assuming that's not the apex fan service moment. I'm sure that's going to happen when Izuku kisses Ochako or Izuku like has a big bro hug with Bakugo, which is, you know, coming in the next couple chapters. But Bakugo giving a genuine smile. Like we've only seen stuff of this from like Kami's illusions, but this is the real, fully realized Bakugo smile. And I like it because we all knew that it was coming to this point, right guys? Bakugo is like, uh, kind of like the new Vegeta, I guess. Because it just reminds me so much of Vegeta's character arc at the end of Z. Like, they totally domesticated him at the end. And I'm not saying Bakugo's domesticated, but uh, he is uh, certainly approaching his uh, fan servicey likable side more than ever. Which, I, you know, it's necessary. We're at the end of the series. This is what a lot of us have been wanting. Then All for One, like, starts panicking because he's like, oh crap, I need to get to Tomura and give him my copy of All for One so I can completely take him over. You know, his plan that he's working on for uh, too long. The plan with uh, 100 steps and then 300 extra backup steps to those steps. And then he starts thinking about all the heroes that he had fought in this arc leading up to this moment. And I guess this is Horikoshi showing us that like everyone played their part in stopping All for One from successfully completing his plan. Even if they were just able to stop him from moving a single inch or stop him from achieving whatever he was going to do one second less than what he was supposed to, they successfully stopped him from winning. No matter what little thing they did or how much panel time they had, all of the characters we see here play their part in saving the world. And I like it. It's better than nothing. I know that Horikoshi can't give everyone a chapter dedicated to themselves and, and also satisfying character arcs and storyline conclusions. I mean, he could if he was like Oda, but you know, Oda is a freak, but this is good enough. And it could also be tying into what he was talking about in the previous chapter with the, the butterfly effect. You know, the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil can cause a hurricane in Texas. You know, just something as little as like Mineta stopping all for one from walking more and turning around and looking at him and getting upset like that was enough to stop all for one and then we come into the end of the chapter with bakugo just grabbing all for one by the face and telling him that's like i'm your final boss bro which we were talking about before and he just levels him with like this ultra concentrated explosion blast and he's like i'm the guy who steps in when that nerd referring to izuku can't handle it all on his own and it's like bakugo finally realizing his part in this story. He is a uh, endeavor. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're getting across, right? Izuku is all might, and Bakugo is endeavor. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. There always has to be a number two. It's like, you know, Michael Jordan had Scottie Pippen. But anyway, I'm assuming that this is really gonna mess all for one up, and he's probably going to regress in age again. We also talked about this before. I just thought that it was gonna happen sooner, and... <laughs> I'm thinking at this point, we're going to see Bakugo just completely destroy like a toddler. <laughs> and uh, I think 
Horikoshi is going to make that more tolerable by just making All for One look like making him more tetsuo -y will make us less feel bad about Bakugo just completely wiping the floor with like a five-year-old. So this chapter opens up with us seeing essentially like a montage of battles that have been completed and some that are still kind of going on, I suppose. So we see the battle in the front of the hospital, you know, back when Shoji was taking on Spinner with Koda. That's all wrapped up and done. I guess Spinner's done too. I mean, we already knew that, but the battle on Okotu Island is done too. The one with Gang Orca and the Nomus, and it's implied it was like super high diff. I mean, it kind of has to be. The Nomus are essentially way too overpowered compared to the rest of these heroes, but I guess them all teaming up eventually led to them winning. Then we see that there's actually another fight going on at the National Tacoba Arena, and apparently this character's name is Gashley. I don't know who this is. I don't know. Maybe there's like some supplementary material that shows his name or something but he's based on something else kind of reminds me of like Babadook or something but if you look closely at the panel it's like he has some kind of like baby manipulation quirk or something I don't know and I guess this is going to be like Ojiro and Ryukyu's like final battle I mean since they're like showing that it's still going on hopefully they're going to come back to it at least for like <laughs> another one panel I suppose because Ojiro he deserves at least that much I mean I was hoping that all 20 you know classmates of class 1a would get their moment because like considering how horikoshi is wrapping up so many things in literally just two pages here <laughs> like we're seeing kuroiro and kamakiri from class 1b it's like oh hey guys they were here they did something they evacuated uh, shiketsu through the underground system so don't worry guys they had their ultimate final moment their full character arcs they like it don't worry they're enjoying this we see that Skeptic was captured by Hound Dog Man, Miss Joke, and Shindo. So this is like their final moment, I guess. It's just really telling of how Horikoshi is feeling at this point. And he just wants this to end. Like he is just so over this, I guess, at this point. And hey, I don't blame him. He's been making this series for 10 years, grinding for 10 years like hard grinding. He's had to take multiple breaks in this year alone. But anyway, we're coming back to Bakugo, who is unbelievably powerful right now. Like the explosion that he is creating from his attack on All For One, which we actually saw happen at the end of the previous chapter. It looks like a freaking sun destroying the city. <laughs> oh, and Edshot is still alive. <laughs> He's like on the ground next to All Might as they're watching the power creep absorb Bakugo. And he's like at the brink of death. Even if only for a brief moment, he left Shigaraki in the dust. He learned something new about his quirk. And it's like, yeah, we know. It's like he has the cluster ability, but apparently there's like some kind of pain thing tied to it and it's a side effect. I mean, we'll go a little more into it, but Bakugo is also being assisted by gear shift here from what I remember because they had that moment where Izuku had touched Bakugo by like grabbing his hand or wrist or whatever and then catapulted him at all for one. But yeah, I guess Edshot is surviving here, but it's like, is he going to just exist as this like worm thing? Cause that's awful. Unless he's like able to regenerate or something or they give him synthetic tissue to recreate his body or give him like a robot or something. But after Bakugo hit all for one with this massive explosion attack, he like sent him deep down and like through buildings into the concrete. And all for one isn't really too phased by this. He's like, oh, I'll kill him later because he's only focused on getting Shigaraki right now because once he fuses with Shigaraki, he essentially becomes unstoppable. And Shigaraki is like right there. I don't know, like a couple blocks away from him. And speaking of him, we're coming back to his fight against Izuku. Izuku is having a little inner monologue about what's going on with his battle here. And he's like, I've been keeping my distance, avoiding his attacks thanks to danger sense. But how will I deal with his regeneration plus insta-death plus enhanced body? I still don't have an answer. So insta-death, I guess that's DK. Has DK been referred to as insta-death before? I don't really remember. I mean, it's accurate. Or maybe it's like an evolved version of the quirk? I don't know. But Izuku, I, I can tell you right now what you can do. I mean, he had risk control of Shiraki for like 20 chapters. But all you have to do is 
is just trap his arms from the back with your legs and then wrap your arms around his neck like in a rear naked choke position. Unhinge his spine so he's like paralyzed and then just rip his head off. You're strong enough to do that. Like he's strong too, enhanced body quote unquote, but you have 100% more than 100% of one for all. He could be reinforced by black whips and just rip his head off and he's done. Or you could just fly over to the ocean or the water or whatever and then just float above it while you hold his head under there and then just drown him. I know it would be way too simple in the series would just end if he was able to do that. But it's just funny that the whole world is like putting their faith in one 16 year old boy who doesn't really know how to fight. I mean, he knows how to use his quirks very well. I mean, that's like the whole thing. He's God essentially. But man, if he just had some fight IQ, he could have easily taken care of Shigaraki by now. Just at least fully understanding how jujitsu and the other building blocks of MMA work. And I know this picture that I supplied here doesn't have both arms trapped, but I mean, in this instance, he would be trapping them both with his legs or black whips or something, you know, so he can't touch them. But I only say that because he says I don't have an answer. So I thought, you know, maybe I'd give him one. You know, put me in this war. I, I would be like the coach with like a megaphone, like, Izuku, do this, rip his head off. No, I can't do that. That's what a villain does. It's okay, it's war. We kill first, we ask questions later. And we could just, you know, revisionist history of this whole thing and make it seem like we were the good guys afterwards. But Izuku's like, it's time for the final, final one. Referring to what he's going to do against Shigaraki here because the next gear shift that he uses will be his last. Even if it's a short one, the blowback will prevent him from moving again. And he said this before. Pretty sure we talked about this, what, last year or 10 months ago or something? And then he used it on Bakugo. It's like, no, I actually meant if I use it two more times, then I can't move again. And I thought that was going to lead to some sequence where, I don't know, he's out of commission for a little bit. But no, I, I think this is going to take us into the ending of the series. Because after the whole Bakugo and All for One fight wraps up, we're going to go into Izuku versus Shigaraki final battle. And I just hope that Horikoshi at least decides to take his time with that. I mean, I thought that this series was going to end before Christmas break, but now it's looking like it might end in February. But anyway, we're coming back to Bakugo and All for One. And All for One is like speeding through the city like a UFO. Now trying to get to Shigaraki, of course. But Bakugo is on his butt because he figured out that the concentrated sweat as it flows through his body, it hurts. But if he focuses on where it hurts the most, he can master the key to unleashing quote unquote secondary explosions. So I guess this means he could just double up on cluster. So it's like cluster times two. So it's like one explosion and then a chain reaction, instant explosion after that. But this makes Bob go like way faster than he was before. So fast he can't even control himself, but he's like spinning out of control as he's chasing after all for one. And he's about to fire a blast at him but all for one's like it happened again why is this pebble making me angrier than all might this is in reference to before bakugo first died when he was fighting shigaraki slash all for one like when that whole thing was going on and bakugo reminded him of the second user as he is reminding him of him now and it takes us back to this flashback of when all for one was killing the second user and all for one's like oh they look alike and we're hearing the dialogue from this sequence as well and the second user's like you're looking for yoichi demon lord he's gone you killed him so that explains what happened to yoichi i mean we know that he was dead obviously but yeah all for one killed him and all for one's like feeling hatred means remembering all of this that's why he's to blame at that time if he hadn't reached his hand like the second user reaching out to save yoichi from his imprisonment from all for one and i don't think this is the exact moment where yoichi passes on one for all to the second user but he eventually does and somehow he figures figured out that he needed to give his DNA to him and then for him to like willingly accept it or something. I don't know, I'm not gonna question it because it doesn't really matter. But this finally confirms what the connection between the second user Bakugo is. And it's that they just look alike, which is hilarious because it goes back to one of the most notorious theories in the entire series. Some of you newer viewers or readers of this series probably don't remember this and that's fine. But like four or five years ago, we got to see like the silhouettes of the previous users of One for All for the first time. 
and we saw these two guys that look like Bakugo and Kirishima. More so Bakugo. And it led to all of these theories about, oh, that's Bakugo from the past because there's some kind of time travel stuff going on. And Bakugo had to go back in time so that he could become the second user of One for All so that it could be passed on to the future. And I was like, eh, that's cool. I like it. But as time went on, it was like making less sense because nothing was really connecting to it. And now it's, you know, for sure fully debunked, which is hilarious because it's just, yeah, they look alike. And I wonder if Horikoshi kind of like shot himself in the foot with this because the silhouette of the second user does literally look exactly like Bakugo. So is he kind of just like, yeah, I'm messing with you guys. Or did he not even realize what he was doing? And now he's just, I don't know, covering his tracks. I don't really know. It's just interesting the way that he's going about this. Or maybe it's just supposed to be like, yeah, this guy kind of was like the Bakugo a hundred years ago. If we're going by like One Piece rules, how everybody is like a reincarnation of someone of the original One Piece story that happened a thousand years ago. Same thing with My Hero, I guess, except that just a hundred years ago or a little over a hundred. And Yoichi was like the first uh, Deku, I don't know. But we come to the end of the chapter where Bakugo like blasts All for One into a building again and All for One is just livid and he's like, it's all your fault, Kudo! And I believe that he's referring to the second user here, meaning that the second user's name is Kudo, which is fine. Now we know his name. But Bakugo's like, Nah, I'm Kachan of the Bakugos, which is satisfying, of course, because Bakugo finally referring to himself as Kachan. I think this is the first time that he has done it in the main series, right? I mean, maybe he's done it in a light novel or, I don't know, mission team-ups or something, but I think this is the first time that he says it in the series, which is great because Kachan is like Deku's pet name for him. So Bakugo, you know, his character arc, you know, we've been seeing it come full circle here since he's uh, come back to life. Like, it, it took Bakugo dying for him to become fully comfortable with himself. <laughs> So we have a super fascinating chapter here today because we're getting All For One's backstory along with his brother, of course, but also the origin of Quirks themselves because we're seeing who Patient Zero is for the very first time. And apparently it was actually All For One's mother because she had been a lady of the night and also homeless. But it says that for around a year or so, she had been ill and that these warts had started growing from her left arm. And when we see them, they look extremely similar to the horn that Eri has. Now, before I go more into that, let me just say that it is pointed out in this chapter that this wart or growth that she has is apparently the spike quirk that All For One will go on to use many times in the series. Now, I don't know if that literally means that the spike quirk was the very first quirk that ever manifested in the human race. The way that Horikoshi puts forth the information in this chapter is kind of like him telling us it's up to you to decide. I think he wants to leave it open-ended so that not every single thing about the origin of quirks can be clearly defined. But I'll go more into that, of course. But we're also finding out that she didn't realize that she was pregnant for eight months and she couldn't even remember the conception of the two twins inside of her meaning that she doesn't know who the father is or when the father could have even done the deed i mean clearly deeds had been done on her because you know she's a lady of the night but she doesn't remember who it was so that's what i was saying about how horikoshi is trying to leave it somewhat open-ended here like we don't know who all for one and yoichi's father was we don't even know if there's a possibility it was some kind of immaculate conception because when we see the panel of all for one being born he has the hole in his hand which is iconic to the all for one quirk but it's always been analogous to christ and of course christ the big you know thing in his backstory is that his mother Mary kind of just became pregnant through the, you know, the power of God. So it's possible that Horikoshi is doing some kind of parallel here and that I'm not saying that literally the God of the My Hero world impregnated her or whatever, but it's possible that there's some kind of supernatural force behind her becoming pregnant. Now it's either that or just some random guy, you know, did the deed and then I don't know. And something just happened and the DNA mutated. 
for some reason. And it goes back to like what I was saying, I don't think we'll really ever truly know what the full answer to this is. And that's unfortunate, but I'm appreciative that we're at least getting this much information. Because in Demon Slayer, for example, I won't spoil anything, but we never really find out like the origin of the origin of the demons, if that makes sense. I'm trying to word it without spoiling you. But anyway, after she gave birth to the twins here, she passes away and we find out that the warts on her arm are gone and that's of course because all for one just immediately took that quirk from her and as the babies were just you know chilling there with her dead body rats started to come and apparently they ate the corpse but the newborns were able to get washed away in the river and they survived somehow who knows but you know all for one he was just a beast after he was born i mean literally he was just a, he's huge he's like the biggest baby ever <laughs> but i'll get more into that but the rats eating the corpse of their mother is super important because back in the overhaul arc overhaul said that there was a theory that quirks spread via rats or that they came from rats and we're seeing that that is very much the case here now obviously this doesn't mean that quirks come from rats because they don't however the rats ate all for one's mom's corpse and then they spread throughout the world and then that's how quirks spread to humanity because it says one year later the glowing baby was the first of many meta abilities being documented around the world so these rats spread that much and then this is how quirks started going around and the glowing baby is actually the first documented quirk since chapter one we thought that the glowing baby was the first quirk but that is not the case it appears that like i said all for one's mom is patient zero and that all for one and his brother yoichi were the second and third quirk users possibly and if that is the case i think that would be really cool for horikoshi's overall narrative between one for all and all for one because it was always said that one for all you know yoichi the original quirk that he had was useless because it was an ability that had no ability other than to pass itself on to another person and it didn't become you know the ultra mega powerhouse quirk that it is until all for one gave yoichi the power stockpiler quirk and it fused together and it became one for all but now i think that this posits that they were technically both born with useless quirks because yoichi had the ability to give nothing but on the other hand all for one technically has the ability to take nothing because you know his mom was born with a quirk of course but if that didn't happen or if there was no one else then his ability would have been to be able to take nothing because there would be no quirks and even if it just came to the point of where his mom and him and his brother were the only ones with quirks and he would only be able to take the spike quirk you know what i'm saying but as the quirk started to spread the media apparently classified it as a mysterious disease and they said that it came from a new gene that wasn't human and then they classified it as another species however apparently that announcement was made way too early and it's what led society into chaos you know the whole big chaos that we heard about over a hundred years ago because when the meta abilities or the quirks first started to spread it like basically broke down society and they had to start from zero and i think this is almost analogous to how covid first started because when we see these like resistance fighters or protesters I, I don't know passing by all for one as he's like an orphan they think that quirks are like a disease that can spread to them like via airborne because they're like yeah they're probably carriers and of course when COVID started there was a lot of fear and panic going around and we thought that it acted in certain ways that it didn't and whatnot so this could be paralleling to that you know also just showing how humanity can instantly go into like fear mode and everyone is against everyone but anyway we see that all for one is just off the rip a psychopath he immediately kills these protester guys with the spike quirk that he took from his mother like viciously it's one of the most vicious panels in the series actually that we've seen since i think my villain academia time and this is establishing of course that all for one like i said was a piece of crap since he was born even the narration is telling us that like he believed that the world should belong to him and that he drained the mother of all of her nutrients so that yoichi couldn't even get any so yoichi was like a almost just looks like a normal baby to be honest because all for one is such a massive unit like he is the size of all might all might is like seven foot two like 400 pounds at like 
six <laughs> percent body fat but we're also finding out that all for one kept yoichi around because he is essentially like one of his possessions and i guess he just didn't want to be alone because his whole big ethos is that he wants everyone to rely on him because we see them reading comics as a kid and while they can't read yoichi can follow the images and see the story through that way and yoichi of course wants to be a hero like the comic that he's reading this is of course i guess uh, proto all might which is also another cool narrative here because while yoichi didn't become the hero that he always wanted to he allowed the future to foster the hero that he always wanted in all might and izuku you know eventually however all for one on the other hand saw yoichi reading that and he decided to take the other narrative in the comic book and decided to be the villain that reigns supreme through fear and that he wants a world where everyone exists only for his sake and this actually lines up with what aoyama was telling izuku about what all for one ultimately wanted about how he wants the world to become reliant on him and his quirks for like utilities like the water quirk the electricity quirk the fire quirk etc etc everyone has to be reliant on him like there would be no more natural resources anymore without him being able to supply them we also find out that the glowing baby became like the leader of the activists i guess because he was the first documented quirk user of course and that when he became the glowing man or the glowing teen all for one eventually killed him and took his ability because he was kind of jealous of him and also you know he thought he was a fraud because he wasn't actually the first quirk user it actually turns out that there was 50 babies born with quirks in india two weeks before the glowing baby shout out to india hey if you're from india let me know in the comments love you guys but i wish they went more into these 50 babies born with quirks in india because we hardly ever see india in the series actually i don't think we ever do is like one of the international heroes from india i don't really remember to be honest the international heroes that we more so see prominently in the third my hero movie but anyway coming to the end of the chapter we're coming to the recurring flashback of the second user of one for all Kudo saving Yoichi from All For One's imprisonment. And I think this is All For One saying this, where he's like, you know, why are you running? Who are you? Get away from him. He's mine. If you stop being mine, then... And then at the end, we see his hand being severed or completely destroyed or pretty sure this is the instance where All For One kills Yoichi because we found out that he did do that with the second user telling that to All For One. It's almost like All For One forgets that he killed Yoichi moments after it happens, kind of. Or days or some time after it happened and i guess this is also the instance where one for all is being passed to the second user maybe inadvertently because his hand does have blood on it possibly and maybe that's the dna transfer that went through there i'm sure it'll be explained in the next chapter because you know since we got the full origin of all for one maybe we'll get the full origin of one for all so we've got a pretty great chapter here because we're getting the ending of all for one's flashback and origin story and with that we're getting to see the greatest battle to ever take place in the my hero academia world and that is the epic fight between prime all might and prime all for one which happened around seven years i think before the story had started the fight that nerfed both all might and all for one and i'll get to that of course but first we're seeing the moment when all for one straight up kills his brother yoichi and this apparently happened two months after after Kudo had rescued Yoichi from being held captive by All For One. And it's pretty brutal. I don't know what quirk he's using to kill him, but he's like blowing him apart. Could be decay. I don't think it is, but that would be pretty interesting because that also still needs to be revealed that All For One is very likely to be the one that gave Shigaraki or young Tenko Shimura the decay quirk. That would be pretty hilarious if Horikoshi never reveals that. But he's doing something. I don't know, maybe an air blast or something. I don't know. But this is the moment when Yoichi died. And Kudo, like, looks at All for One as they're, like, escaping. And this is ultimately going to become the downfall of All for One. Like, this trickle-down effect, or, as Horikoshi put it, the butterfly effect a couple chapters back. Like, the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil can cause a hurricane in Texas. It's just this moment where Kudo looks at All for One so menacingly and without fear that it eventually goes on to live through Bakugo and we'll talk about that 
because I have some things to say. But later on, All for One is like chilling in his penthouse or whatever, and he has Yoichi's hand, just like how he had the hands of Shigaraki's deceased family members. And by holding it, he's able to notice that Yoichi's quirk is gone. Not only like his original quirk, but also the quirk that All for One gave him, the power stockpiler quirk. And I was wondering, like, how does he know that the quirk is gone from just holding the hand? And I forgot that aside from the quirk factor, having a quirk gives your body like a special mechanism called the plus alpha. And these plus alphas are collectively called the quirk factor. So I suppose he's just analyzing the plus alpha in the hand and seeing that it doesn't exist anymore. And I'm just assuming that All For One's quirk allows him to have this ability too. Like just the inherent ability of it. But this is denoting, of course, the origin of One For All. Because Yoichi originally had a quirk that allowed him to give the quirk. <laughs> but the quirk factor was so small and insignificant that it didn't even register to All For One that it was even a quirk. So that's why All For One forcibly gave him the power stockpiler quirk because he wanted him to stop being such a weakling but he could have given him such a better quirk because like you need to train to make the power stockpiler quirk worthwhile and Yoichi obviously he can't really train because he's so like underdeveloped and weak just as a person because even all for one says it in this chapter that because he didn't get enough nutrients as a baby it probably led to the quirk factor being so minuscule because we also found out that when all for one and Yoichi were babies like after their mother the lady of the night the very first quirk user gave birth to them all for one kind of just sapped all of her quote-unquote nutrients and you know it just made him as big as all might because why not and then it just made yuichi like a regular japanese dude i guess but then later we come back to kudo the second user and he's with the third user whose name is bruce by the way just subtly revealed right here they're able to analyze the second user's blood or something i don't know they have like equipment here and they're able to see that kudo now has two quirk factors meaning that kudo now has what is going to become one for all and we don't see the exact moment that this happens or maybe we do i mean maybe it's like the moment when kudo grabbed yoichi's hand to save him because i think they both had open wounds or something maybe or at some point they both had open wounds and i guess that's how yoichi was able to transfer for one for all to him i guess just subconsciously unless they exchange dna in another way which is always possible but i don't think horikoshi will ever explore that if you know what i mean then we see like this um vision or i don't know we just see like yoichi talking and he says referring to all for one the power to give and take could have been the kindest in the whole world and that's very true because we see you know at, at one of those initial flashbacks of the beginning of uh, quirk society all for one would like act like he was a benevolent figure to manipulate people and he would like take these heteromorphic quirks that were like hindering people and he would give it to people who didn't have quirks so in theory if he just kept doing that he could have helped nearly the entire population and i think this is more foreshadowing that izuku will eventually have all for one's quirk like i think at the end he's going to pull an avatar if you're familiar with the ending of that series i won't spoil it for what happens but in my opinion horikoshi has already taken so much from avatar as it is i don't see why he just wouldn't take the ending as well but after this we see a montage of all for one systematically killing all of the one for all users we're also seeing the moment where I guess Dr. Yujiko falls in love with All for One. It looks like it's at some like conference or something or just, I don't know, some meeting that he had to show everybody that he's the king. I don't know, maybe some cult thing. But we're also seeing that All for One was also unable to straight up take One for All from the users because Yoichi, I guess his will or spirit lived on in the quirk factor and it was just so strong that it even prevented all for one from being able to take it so i guess this you know just further angered all for one and made him want to take the quirk even more rather than just trying to keep yoichi for himself
himself, kind of like a serial killer. I mean, literally like a serial killer. They take pieces of people that they like, or at least some of them, and they keep it as like a memento. I mean, I guess that's originally how it started for All for One, and it eventually just became him wanting to become all-powerful by getting like ostensibly the strongest quirk besides his own. And with that, we eventually get to the fight between him and All Might, because, you know, him killing all of the one for all users eventually will lead him to fighting all might and man it's pretty epic this is all i've ever really wanted to see in the series to be honest since it was mentioned that this was a thing and while we're only just getting one page dedicated to it with two panels i'm grateful that we're at least getting this because horikoshi could have just glanced over this or even just gave us one single panel in this montage of him killing them all but let me just explain quickly why this battle is so significant. It goes back to what I was saying about they're both in their primes. These are the two strongest characters to ever exist within the series. I mean, it will probably be eclipsed in the last couple chapters when we see the final fight between Izuku and Shigaraki. Because, you know, All Might didn't have access to the crazy plot power-up that Izuku has. The plot just didn't get to that point for All Might. So he had to grind and work and get all the power for himself. Like, One for All wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for All Might. Like, he is the one who truly fostered it to become this outrageous power that it is. Not taking anything away from the previous users, I think it originally started with the fourth, when he figured out that he can just grind out the power stockpiler and become a superhero, essentially. But it was really All Might that took it to the level where he can just straight up pop all for one's head, which we'll talk about. All Might is also what One for All was eventually supposed to become anyway. A power strong enough to overthrow All for One, which he does. But him becoming strong enough and him being so passionate ultimately led them to having this big final battle seven years before the first chapter. And it really could have been epic if we saw this play out because All For One has a pretty cool power set, especially during this time. We see a glimpse of it in the All Might Rising OVA, which was like a companion piece for the first movie, when he like completely alters like a city kind of, and then just blows it up with one of his like energy manipulation quirks or whatever. And while we do get a glimpse of this through younger All For One, you know, as he's been rewinding in the last couple chapters and also when he fought the last barrage of heroes with Endeavor it still would have been different because he wouldn't have had like a time limit on him and of course we never really got to see All Might at this point at the peak of his absolute power going ham on someone so it just would have been cool to be able to see this extended you know maybe it just could have had an entire chapter dedicated to it why not there is still hope that we'll get to see an extended sequence once this comes to the anime but I'm not really gonna hold my breath because they're already working these animators to death as it is anyway so I'll be happy if it's just not like a still image montage and we get to see somewhat of this play out but man i just do love these two panels all might has so much raw emotion in his face because this is the culmination of his entire life essentially and also he had to watch his master die and everyone else died that was involved with all for one and also in this panel you can see the damage that all might took to the left side of his abdomen from all for one the thing that nerfed him completely and would also led him to having to pass one for all on to izuku we don't know exactly what he did but gran torino says to all might in their second fight with all for one you know the one that happens in season two that all for one said something or i don't know got through all might to let his guard down like he you know whatever and then i guess he hit him with the drill quirk or he hit him with the energy blast or something and it took out that portion of all might and even then all might's like no and then in the final moments of this fight he just hits him with like this perfect superhero punch and pops all for one's head and this is what led to him becoming a potato and i guess he was implied to be dead here because we eventually see him like in a freaking morgue afterwards and this would have been the end of the series for sure like all might would have done the deed and the world would basically would have lived in a much i wouldn't say 
peace. There will never be peace, unfortunately. But it will live in a balanced, better society than, of course, what it is now. Meaning that All Might is, for sure, the greatest hero to ever live, as we already knew. But, you know, the plot had different plans for him, unfortunately. And Yuji Ko is able to sneak into the morgue and take all for one's body. That's how easy it was, guys. And I know, everybody is none the wiser of Yuji Ko at this point. They just think he's a doctor, so... He could just do whatever he wants. I get it. But why did they just, like, melt his body? Just melt that. Or did vaporize it? Or, or just smash his head some more? Make sure that his head is completely dead? Or I don't know. Just don't leave the devil's body in a morgue unattended. There has to be, like, somebody out there with a quirk that can, like, melt a body or vaporize it, right? Just get it Ashido's parents or something. It's just, uh, ah, it's just so frustrating that it was just so easy <laughs> for Yujiko to get his body. But anyway, this is the end of the flashback, and we're coming to real time with All for One, who is still fighting against Bakugo, trying to get to Shigaraki so that he can forcibly take his quirk and, you know, take over his body and become the ultimate evil, or the true symbol of evil, as he always says. And it comes back to All for One saying, it's all your fault, Kudo. And like I said, it's uh, the whole trickle-down effect, the butterfly effect. It all started with Kudo looking at All for One that one day. It kind of gave him... PTSD and now he sees that very same look in Bakugo and he's like oh I get it they're not related because he killed everybody related to Kudo that's how petty all for one is finally squashing that theory that they are related in some way however he says oh it's the eyes they weren't like that before it's just a coincidence like it transcended space and time just to oppose me but he makes it look like he carries that man's will so, if you're familiar with One Piece, this is kind of Horikoshi shoehorning in the Will of D in the very last chapters here, but I also talked about this, I had two or three chapters uh, reviews ago, that Yoichi and Kudo were like the first iteration of Izuku and Bakugo, I guess and the butterfly effect or trickle down effect leads to another version of them coming along to eventually stop all for one just like uh you know the will of d and joy boy and luffy in one piece sorry spoilers well, not really that big of spoilers but it's like the same thing also goes back to avatar you know with the avatar lineage that's where i'm pretty sure horikoshi even got the idea for one for all and the vestiges and all that stuff i also like the fact that izuku does use gear shift on bakugo which was kudo's quirk so that's another way for him to live through Bakugo. Pretty cool stuff here. I mean, I do like it. And it gets to the point of where All for One is just freaking out. He's like, you know, I'm running out of time. I need to get to Shigaraki right now, and I need to take over him. Because, you know, he's constantly rewinding, and he's already like a middle schooler or something at this point, maybe. And if he keeps fighting against Bakugo, he'll keep rewinding. And for some reason, All for One just like can't kill Bakugo. I'm not saying that I want him to, but with all of the crazy power and quirks that he has you'd think that he can just kill bakugo <laughs> i get bakugo is at the peak of his power right now and he's like a super saiyan but still so instead of thinking rationally all for one decides to accomplish all of his tasks in one feat by just immediately jetlining it to shigaraki and then forcibly taking him over so what he does is full factor release where he, I guess, is using all of his quirks at once and becoming this big flesh amalgamation similar to Tetsuo from the end of the Akira movie. And this is going to allow him to repel himself uh, by expelling all of the energy from this. And it looks amazing. Like, Horikoshi really went in on this. And I guess this is going to be the ending sequence for All for One. Like, in the next chapter, I, I, I think this is the end not of the series but of this fight because all might's like he'll rewind back to a baby if he uses that it's his final gamble and i do think that's going to happen because as he's coming down the city trying to get towards shigaraki bakugo is in his way and he's like are you stupid <laughs> you're bound to lose with that thing and that's very true all for one as quote unquote smart as he is and all of this planning and contingencies he's put into play it ultimately comes down to him just making a big emotional gamble which I guess is fitting because, again, the trickle-down effect from Kudo and Yoichi, but more so just Kudo, living on through Bakugo and making All for One think emotionally rather than rationally. So I think Bakugo is going to stop All for One by using whatever his final ultimate attack is 
He's not going to kill him because, you know, he's Bakugo. But he will stop All for One. And I think All for One will eventually rewind back to the baby that we saw at the beginning of the flashback. And he'll essentially be done at that point. And I think Shigaraki will be the one to finish the job there. He might straight up eat All for One as a baby or something. Or at the minimum absorb him or just decay him after he takes the quirk factor maybe. Or he just says screw it and just keeps his own original quirk factor maybe but pretty sure shigaraki is going to be the one to finish off all for one here but bakugo is going to be the one that defeats him and that's the most important thing. so coming off of the previous chapter we saw all for one going for his final gambit because he's essentially at his limit and he is running out of time because he's rewinding from the reverse engineered version of eri's quirk that dr yujiko was able to make for him however since it was unstable it keeps rewinding all for one slowly until he will i guess become nothing and right now he's like a middle schooler teenager kind of and the more damage that he takes and the more effort that he has to apply rewinds him even more so now that he's gotten to this point he is really out of time and it goes into what i was saying about him trying his final gambit and it involves him activating all of his quirks at once which turns him into like this big meatball missile thing that can conjure enough energy to propel him across the city to get to shigaraki and overpower him so that he can take over his body and merge the quirk factors in one foul swoop because if he doesn't he feels that he wouldn't be strong enough to take over shigaraki at this point however bakugo is in his way and as all for one is like propelling himself through the city and like destroying everything in his wake pretty impressive sequence here i mean very fitting for the ending of the series bakugo is just staring him down saying like please explode explode and then suddenly all for one's head explodes but he's not dead, but it really messed him up. And Bakugo was able to do this because it turns out a couple chapters back, he snuck some of his nitroglycerin sweat drops in his mouth. <laughs> I know, when did that happen? I mean, we don't literally see it play out. It's kind of just told to us that it happened in the sequence where Bakugo is upside down blasting all for one. I think in chapter 406. But the way that Bakugo explains it is that since the rain weakens his quirk, you know, I guess since the water mixes with his nitroglycerin, in sweat and like dilutes it he decided to add a coating of regular sweat to his nitroglycerin sweat and then prevented them from activating and he thought that in theory after some time they'll eventually mix together and explode from an outside stimulus and this is what he did and he snuck some in all for one's mouth and then just waited for them to explode and if you're wondering like how did he do this it's like i know i'm right there with you it's like how can he manipulate the sweat to cover other beads of sweat it's like yeah, he just can it's his quirk so he has control over the sweat both his regular and the nitroglycerin but this was enough to stifle all for one you know since he has to heal himself again and like we talked about before the more effort and quirks and power and damage that he takes and has to use it's going to further rewind him and hinder him but still he somehow is not finished from this like i, I assume that he only had one shot to to do that giant meat missile thing but no he says that despite the damage he could do one more shot <laughs> and as he starts to launch himself again Bakugo's goes like nah and hits him with a howitzer impact i love this move one of my favorite in the series and it's really satisfying to see this especially in this panel it's easily one of the best panels horikoshi has ever drawn and again you know fitting for the ending of the series it actually reminds me of the artwork of yusuke murata the artist of the One Punch Man manga. But Bakugo hits him with this howitzer impact, which, you know, unfortunately we don't see enough in the series. And I guess it's because it's just too powerful and that it would just straight up murder people. But I just really like the fundamental of the move because that also makes sense. The way that he creates like that wind tunnel to amplify the explosion, just really cool stuff. But Bakugo doesn't stop there. He continues to go off on him with a barrage of explosions, unlike we've ever seen before. I mean, Bakugo has done some stuff like this in the movies along with the how it's her impact actually but nothing like this this is truly Bakugo's final ultimate sequence and while it does look great in the manga it is short-lived so i think the anime will do this sequence much justice like i can already see how horikoshi is setting it up for them to be honest and it's gonna look great when we see it in like two to three years maybe two 
And while Bakugo is just raining explosions on him, he's also evading spikes and stuff. Like, All for One isn't going gently into that good night, but he's just so damaged and exhausted at this point that he can hardly mount an offense the way that he normally would, and he's just getting lit up by Bakugo here. Like, literally getting blown to pieces. And then we cut to All for One's inner monologue, and he's like, I'm unable to mix quirk factors together. Is it because my body's becoming young and frail? And then we go into the All for One vestige world. This is the counterpart to the one for all vestige world where we normally saw Izuku along with the previous users of one for all and their vestiges. But in the all for one vestige world, we see the vestiges of the quirks that all for one has stolen. And they're kind of not complying with him anymore because we see Hawks' vestige there. And he's like, as you brandish negative emotions, your control weakens. That's why I was able to hold this fan meeting of mine. Shigaraki was your downfall. And I guess this was the ultimate purpose of All for One taking Hawks' quirk. Because I was confused as to why he did that because it didn't really go anywhere. He didn't even use Hawks' quirk. And I suppose it was a way that Horikoshi could kill Hawks without actually killing him, you know? And also it could go into the whole Icarus flying too close to the sun and all that stuff, but yeah, Hawks' vestige is the final nail in the coffin here, aside from what Bakugo is going to do. Using his charm and popularity to round up the vestiges to prevent them from allowing All for One to work properly. Similar to what Star and Stripe did in her final moments, but she was like straight up killing the vestiges, you know, to prevent All for One from being able to use the quirk factor. Also, rest in peace, Star and Stripe. I wish she was able to come back in this final couple chapters, but you know, she is is fully dead but come on it's battle manga you can rewrite it and retcon it any way you want to bring back dead characters but i digress we come into the final sequence here where bakugo is landing his one final big ultimate shot on all for one where he's just hitting him in the face but exploding at the same time it's like a smack punch thing and we also see all might's gauntlet on his arm as well like which i guess was a splint as well holding bakugo's arm in place so this is also showing that All Might's final gesture to Bakugo, giving him his support item, which was based off of Bakugo, aided him in this final attack. And after he even hits him, we see it busting off of him and then Bakugo's arm just becoming spaghetti. <laughs> but Bakugo is able to launch All for One into the ground here with one last explosion and just puts him in a crater. And the big giant meatball missile thing is gone. And it's hard to make out what is happening with All for One in this sequence since it's so small but we can assume that he has further regressed into childhood. I'm going to take a guess that he's probably like five years old at this point or maybe a baby because they kept saying that he was eventually going to become a baby but in the final moments here we see it say little by little all the damage dealt by everyone finally meaning that yes it was a group effort here even though it didn't really seem like it until the end because we just assumed oh everyone's just jobbing tall for one it was all for nothing they just went against him and then got knocked down and then he just went on to fight more people until the power creep eventually took him over but no it it's more than that. Everyone did play their part despite how small or minuscule. Like even Mineta, slowly stopping all for one for the seconds that he was able to, played his part in ultimately getting to this point of him being defeated. Like it's been a long time. Like it's been over a year, almost two years in real time that all for one has been battling everyone. And I guess it could go back to what Horikoshi was talking about a few chapters back with the butterfly effect. You know, the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil can cause a hurricane in Texas. And if you even want to go further back than that, you can say that this ultimately started like a hundred years ago when Kudo, the second user of one for all, you know, saved Yoichi, All for One's brother, but then also stared down All for One in that tunnel, you know, fearlessly. And that stuck with All for One for over a hundred years, getting to the point of where Bakugo staring him down reminded him of Kudo. So at this point, All for One seems to be completely defeated and that this is, you know, Bakugo's big ultimate win here, which is great. He deserves it. I like the way that Horikoshi ultimately ended this. You know, Bakugo taking down All for One and of course, Izuku will eventually take down Shigaraki. And speaking of Shigaraki, I think that he is going to be the one who ultimately kills All for One here. I know I've talked about it before, but I got to put it out there for all the new listeners. And it goes back to me saying like, I think All for One's either going to be five years old or like a baby or something 
something because I think it's supposed to parallel to him taking Shigaraki's innocence because Tenko was like five when the decay quirk activated in him. And it's implied, if you look at the panel of Shigaraki's flashback, that when he's being dropped off to his mother's house, when the narration tells us that he's five years old, it's pretty much all for one that is doing it. And I think that he gave Shigaraki or Tenko the decay quirk so that he would ultimately, you know, kill his family because, you know, he wants to raise him to be the next symbol of evil so that he could just take him over because that's what he needed, a vessel with enough hatred so that it could take the one for all quirk, but then also, you know, be augmented so that it could handle the inevitable quirk singularity that the all for one quirk will bring to the user and uh, I guess humanity as well. So yeah, it's fitting that, you know, Shigaraki is the one that will kill him. And I hope that all of that stuff is revealed in the next two chapters, because if it's not, that would be pretty funny if Horikoshi just decides to leave it there and that you have to be like a super hardcore to pick up on the fact that that happened. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this one. Awesome chapter. One of the best in the series. Almost a 10 out of 10 chapter. Almost. But uh, pretty good. Definitely a 9 in my opinion. So coming off of the previous chapter, we saw All for One going for his final gambit against Bakugo and Shigaraki. An attempt to finally make himself complete by making this giant meat missile thing from a combination of all of his quirks. However, it only ended in him getting defeated by Bakugo's final onslaught. And we're seeing the result of it in the beginning of this chapter, where All For One has regressed to a freaking baby. I mean, we knew this was gonna happen because it was said multiple times by All Might that it's inevitable considering that he has been progressively rewinding from the reverse engineered Eri quirk that Dr. Yujiko made for him. And as he's crawling, All For One says, I'm almost there, I just need to give Tomura my quirk. My consumed consciousness will strengthen and the ultimate body will be mine. Looking at Tomura, the part of me inside him, if I take Tomura's body, I'll be able to steal one for all. So that's pretty interesting that he says that. And I'll come back to it because it might give us insight into something that may or may not happen. I mean, he's not taking over Shigaraki, obviously, but I feel like there's something else that needs to come of this. But Bakugo, barely conscious, still standing there, still standing in All For One's way, stopping him from completing his goal. And baby All For One is like freaking out because Bakugo is still there. And as Bakugo is about to like collapse from exhaustion, you know, keep in mind that he just literally came back to life from being dead for like, I don't know how many minutes, but multiple minutes, way longer than any human should be dead, <laughs> if that makes sense. On top of like the ultimate onslaught that he just gave to All For One, and he has this flashback of talking to Kirishima when he says standing through anything makes you crazy strong. And that gives Bakugo the final boost that he needs to regain his footing and stand up once again. And he's like, my victory needs to be perfect, got it? And this is awesome because, you know, this is the same thing that All Might did back in his fight against All For One. I love the All Might parallels in this series between Izuku and Bakugo. And Baby All For One's like, stay away! And he launches a drill spike quirk at him. I guess this is implied to be the very first quirk ever, right? I guess this is the quirk that his mom had, who is, uh, I guess, said to be the first quirk user, or that's all the info... Or, as far as we know, I mean, I guess she was the first one. But you're thinking that Bakugo is going to get stabbed by this thing, but he actually catches it with his teeth and explodes it. And he's like, nighty night, all for one. And that was it. That was all for one's last move, which caused him to reach the point of no return. And he just starts freaking out and just starts dissolving and rewinding back into a fetus and then eventually into an egg. And we see all of these stolen quirk vestiges within him like dissipating as well. We also see Hawks in there. And he's like, the stolen quirk factors, they're going back to their users. Nah, not happening. Way too big of a fan service. So it's like, all right, Horikoshi, you want to break the fourth wall now? That's fine. But it's like, why tell us that you could have did it, but you decided not to? I'm not saying that he needs to do it. Like, I don't really care if all of the stolen quirks go back. I mean, the most significant one, as far as I know, is Hawks's, right? It's like, you could have just did it. I don't think anybody really would have been bothered by it. But this isn't Hawks dying. It's just the stolen and quirk vest. It's like the real Hawks is still alive. He just doesn't have a quirk because I don't know, just so that I guess his vestige could have its moment in these last two chapters. So by proxy, Hawks did do something to aid in the final war, but all for one just 
goes back to nothingness. Like, even what comes before the egg, I can't say it on YouTube, but you know what I mean. And he's seemingly dead. Like, all for one, finally defeated. A character that, you know, we and I personally have been following for the last uh, five plus years. <laughs> and that's a pretty interesting ending for him, but I just would have liked to see a more gruesome outcome for him. A more satisfying ending. I'm not saying that this is bad. I honestly don't think that. It's just slightly underwhelming. Because he is so despicable and has been built up so much. Like, he's been built up to be even more despicable, even more of a big bad than Shigaraki. I mean, for sure. And his ending just seems a little tame. I mean, yeah, you know, in his final moments, he was pathetic and groveling and screaming, No, 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 you know, as a baby. But I just would have liked to see uh, Shigaraki give him the, you know, the final DK. Because it would have came full circle. You know what I mean? Like, All for One is implied to have orchestrated everything that has to do with Tenko becoming Shigaraki. So I just thought it would have been fitting if Shigaraki was the one to do the deed and just decay him in like a gruesome manner. Like whatever fate was destined for All Might, maybe Shigaraki could have just did that to All for One, you know? But no, this is it. And it takes me back to what I was saying in the beginning of the video with All for One saying that the part of him inside of Tomura went out without using that trump card, I can still win this. So either that just means nothing now, since it's just, I, I guess, was the wishful thinking of a failing man here, or there is still a fragment of the vestige of all for one's consciousness inside of Shigaraki. And then maybe we'll get some resolution there, possibly. Because I've also said it before many times, and sorry if I'm repeating myself, I kind of just have to say for the new viewers that come to these videos. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. Like, if you're a recurring viewer of my videos, guys, just give me a subscription. You'll always have the new videos in your subscription feed as soon as they come out. You won't have to wait for it to show up in your suggested, but we still haven't seen, like, the point of where all for one gave Tenko, aka, you know, Lil Shiggy, the DK quirk. Because it's heavily implied that Tenko was born quirkless like Izuku, and then, you know, Shigaraki gave him the DK quirk so that he could accidentally kill his family, and then he could groom him to become the vessel of evil. The symbol of evil, the symbol of hate, whatever he's calling him, I forget. But that still could be revealed because, you know, we are going into the final fight of the series here with Shigaraki versus Izuku, and Tenko is going to play a huge part in that, so maybe that will be revealed later on, but I just hope there's at least a little shred of All for One still inside of the quirk factor that Shigaraki currently has, just so he can get, like, that little final piece of his character arc, which I'm not saying is going anywhere meaningful. Shigaraki is beyond repair at this point, and it will ultimately be Tenko who is saved and not him. I mean, we all know that's going to happen. It was foreshadowed, but man, it just would have been cool narratively to see it come full circle, but... I digress. I'm glad that Bakugo is getting the victory here, though. He has legitimately defeated All for One. Not exclusively as an individual, of course. You know, we've talked about it a few times before with the trickle down of the hero support throughout the last year and a half of chapters here and the butterfly effect analogy that Horikoshi has put in front of us. But this is Bakugo's, you know, final ultimate part in the series, him defeating All for One, which I think is fitting. And I like the way that Horikoshi set it up because... He is the deuteragonist, so, you know, let him get that big win. And, you know, he is, like, the successor to All Might just as much as Izuku is, so let him finish, you know, the final battle here, or at least the first part of it. But then we're getting a flashback to the heroes talking, which says a few days before the final war that we went into or and currently in. And it's like best genus talking to Bakugo, Izuku, Nejiri, Tamaki, Edshot, and Mirko. And they're basically talking about like where the battle should be taking place and who needs to be evacuated and who needs to stay. And it boils down to Best Genus saying that he'd rather fight all for one because he wants to rule. Therefore, he's just not going to kill everybody because then there would be no one to rule. Like, all for one does have a motive here. I mean, he even says it in the beginning of this chapter. He's like, I want everyone to see me forever and ever. Like, his machinations were softly revealed at the beginning of this arc. When Aoyama said that All for One said that he basically wanted to become, like, the communist overlord of the world, where he would have, like, these super powerful quirks that gave everybody, like, basic utilities, 
and that they would be relying on him for them for like water food electricity you know stuff like that so they're like yeah we can fight him because he's somewhat level-headed and we know what he will and won't do however with shigaraki on the other hand he is completely unhinged at this point he has nothing left, no shred of morality. He's in like a full-blown psychosis. Like he says that he's become destruction personified. He'll just destroy anything. He'll kill anyone. He doesn't want to rule, he just wants to destroy. And I like that Horikoshi put this out here because it's setting us up for the, you know, final act here. And it's getting us prepared for like Izuku's final opponent's mindset here. He's not like all for one or the other typical, I guess, final battle manga villains, if you will. He just wants to destroy. And he even says that like Japan has 378,000 square kilometers of land. It won't take me even a week to erase it from the map. Because if he bores vertically with DK, meaning that like if he sends DK beneath the ground, rather than just destroying the surface, he'll be able to destroy instantly much faster and it'll spread at a more devastating rate. So I guess he's going to do that at some point or it's just like a threat i mean it looks like he is doing it in this sequence but i'm not really sure if it is successfully happening i mean we do see the destruction and like waves crashing over but i guess this is happening and he did do it or at least partly obviously he didn't destroy all of japan and we see him continuing to fight against izuku here izuku still in the battle using gear shift fajin and danger sense which is like the main strategy here to be fast enough to contend with shigaraki and you know using danger sense to not get touched by him because you know if you get touched by shigaraki it's game over all he needs to do is just touch you once and you'll get decayed and shigaraki is also acknowledging that all for one has died and all he really says is like, yeah, he deserved to die because he didn't destroy Bakugo. But, you know, I'm thankful for him because he made me stronger. Because now I'm fast enough to match Izuku's speed. So, that might just be the end of All for One. Unless, you know, like I said, there is like a shard of a vestige in him, but... You know, I, I do think we're going to go back into the all for one vestige world, especially what's happening at the end here, because he like grazes Izuku's face. I guess he didn't do enough to be able to decay him because while his fingers do look like they're making contact, Izuku is so fast that he like knife hand chops through his fingers. So I guess he did it fast enough to stop the decay from activating. However, he didn't stop shigaraki from using all for one on him because shigaraki takes the fourth user's quirk danger sense from him which is wild i did not expect this to happen this is a pretty cool twist so we know that shigaraki is capable of taking one for all from izuku i mean this is what all for one was working towards for like 100 years or you know not 100 exactly but a lot of years a lot of decades he needed hatred strong enough to overcome the fail safe that one for all just magically has in it for some reason to be able to stop itself from being taken by all for one and shigaraki has that like that's why all for one wanted to transfer himself to shigaraki and take over his body it was what he said to be the ultimate vessel so now we're seeing the beginning of it and he didn't just straight up take the full one for all quirk factor like he just took a portion of it which is fascinating i didn't know that you could do that but you know we're learning new stuff on the fly here like the quirk singularity is happening before our eyes in this fight even with all for one in the previous fight as well but he took danger sense from izuku which is one of his crucial quirks in defending himself against shigaraki here like i said he needs that to be able to judge the oncoming strikes from shigaraki to avoid them to not be decayed so now he doesn't have you know danger sense aka spider sense anymore and he's at a severe disadvantage another interesting thing is that pretty sure that the shinomori you know the fourth user of one for all his vestige will probably show up in the all for one vestige world meaning that i think shigaraki is also going to take float from izuku as well and we know that Float belonged to Nana Shimura, the grandmother of Tenko Shimura, who eventually becomes Tomura Shigaraki. So her vestige is likely going to have her moment with Shigaraki. And maybe it's at that point when his true history and origin is revealed, you know, with All for One giving him decay and all that stuff. And of course, that's ultimately going to lead to Izuku probably... I, with all due respect, talk no jutsuing uh, Tenko out of him. And then I guess his body somehow becomes tanko or something and then uh you know we'll go from there but let me know what you think about this in the comments guys and if you liked it please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already have a great day and i'll see you in the next one